Coming up tonight, Party Liani is back in the High Court seeking a compensation order. She said her losses amount to $71,000. Tempering with the Trace Together token, users on online forums are claiming to have modified the device. And actress Joanne Pei speaks exclusively to us about local series Last Madame winning a major international award. To be able to stand out from a very crowded platform is not easy, and for us to be able to do that, it was, uh, I mean, I was, I, I didn't expect it. This is The Straits Times News Night. I'm Chiao Suen. I'm Dylan Ang. Great to have you with us this Tuesday evening. We begin with new developments in the Party Liani case. The former domestic worker is claiming $71,000 in losses over her acquittal for theft. But in a surprising move in court today, instead of seeking compensation from her former employers, the family of Mr Liu Man Leung, she wants instead payment from the Attorney General's chambers. Ms. Party's lawyer said over the past four years, she suffered salary losses of about $41,000 and accommodation expenses provided by the Humanitarian Organisation for Migrant Economics. They told the High Court judge that they didn't want to ask Mr. Liu for compensation after he resigned from various positions last month, including the chairmanship of Changi Airport Group. And even though $71,000 is well above the cap of $10,000 that can be claimed if an accused person is acquitted, her lawyer said there has been, in our opinion, some amount of injustice that we wish the court to hear and order compensation. The judge then suggested both sides try third-party mediation instead. Also new tonight, more travellers will soon be allowed to serve their 14-day stay-home notice at home. Travellers from Estonia, Fiji, Finland, Japan, Norway, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Thailand and Turkey can serve their SHN at their place of residence if they have not travelled to any country other than those nine in the last consecutive 14 days. They must also be occupying their place of residence alone or only with household members who are serving SHN with the same travel history. Travellers from the nine country may apply to opt out of dedicated SHN facilities from November 2nd for arrivals on or after November 4th. It's official the handover to Sengkang Town Council from Pasir Ris Pongol and Ang Mo Kio Town Councils will take effect from October 28th. It's just as well that the new Sengkang Town Council unveiled its logo last Friday. The winning design was chosen from the 419 entries received. Sengkang Town Council was formed following the general election to manage the new Sengkang GRC and will be run by the Workers' Party. Let's take a look at the COVID-19 situation here. Seven new cases were confirmed today. They include one community case and none from the workers' dormitories. The remaining six cases were all imported and had been placed on stay-home notices when they arrived here. Dylan, do you remember collecting results with all your friends at the school hall in secondary school or junior college? <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, for sure, you know, sharing all the tears and the joy, but I think mostly tears for me. Well, for those collecting PSLE, OA and N-level examination results this year, they will be missing out on this experience. Students will be getting their grades online and in smaller venues in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Announced earlier today, the tentative dates for results collection are up on the Ministry of Education's website. More than 400,000 Trace Together tokens have been collected since distribution began last month. But authorities are now facing a new problem. Taking to online forums, some users are claiming to have broken open their tokens and removed the battery, with some even swapping the QR code with that of another device. The Smart Nation and Digital Government Group said it was aware of such allegations and warned that tampering with the token is a criminal offence under the Computer Misuse Act. On that note, the token's distribution at community centres have now been temporarily suspended and will begin again from Thursday, one constituency at a time, instead of at the original 38 community centres. This has to better match demand and prevent long queues from forming. 
A former Singapore Armed Forces regular was sentenced today to seven and a half years jail and six strokes of the cane for molesting a girl and attempting to molest another victim four months later. Muhammad Adli Iriandi Muhammad Sanip was convicted this year of molesting an eight-year-old girl in January 2018. He also admitted in court that he had tried to molest another 10-year-old girl in May that same year. The Ministry of Defence said the SAF has discharged him from service. Let's now take a look at what's been trending on social media and sparking conversations today. Here's something for Doraemon fans. Doraemon invades the National Museum of Singapore until the end of December. Doraemon's time-travelling adventures in Singapore runs from Saturday until December 27th. And fans can snap Instagram-worthy selfies at booths scattered through the museum. An Anywhere door will also be featured for fans to imagine themselves being transported to a destination of their choice. Something to surely consider now admission is free for Singaporeans and permanent residents. Most of us are familiar with casting your vote during an election. We go to a polling station and fill up a form. With a week to go until the US presidential election, one woman cast her vote some 200 miles above Earth. Yes, that's right. NASA astronaut Kate Rubins, literally the only American voter not on Earth, voted from the International Space Station via absentee voting. I think it's really important for everybody to vote, and if we can do it from space, uh, then I believe folks can do it from the ground too. Speaking of the US election, confused about the complex system that voters use to pick their president, The Straits Times has got you covered. Our multimedia graphic explaining the details is now live on our website. Be sure to check it out at straitstimes.com. A quick look at sports, national swimmer Kwa Ting Wen has done it again, breaking the Singapore record for the 50-metre freestyle event. Competing in the International Swimming League in Budapest, she clocked 24.26 seconds, beating the previous record of 25.09 seconds set by Amanda Lim in 2014. In case you missed it, Last Madame, the first M18 series from Mediacorp, which stars Joanne Pei as a brothel owner, has won Best Asian Drama at the Busan International Film Festival. It shared the win with Korean drama, When the Camellia Blooms. Speaking exclusively to The Straits Times from the set of her new drama, Ms Pei told us how she felt about winning the prestigious award. Extremely honoured and very, very humbled by this win. Um, I have to say that uh, to be able to stand out from a very crowded platform is not easy and for us to be able to do that it was uh, I mean I was I, I didn't expect it, it you know actually and when, when I recall back when we were filming the show none of us really knew how it was gonna turn out uh, we were so frightened I was frightened I was scared um, but I guess if you never take that step you never know what is in store we also wanted to know what were some of her most memorable Last Madame moments. Not surprisingly, they included the much talked about almost nude scene with co star Jeff Cho. I suppose the prep for that very, uh, that very talked about scene was something that uh, I've never really been through in, in all of my career. It was a very uh, new experience for me. I, I had no idea how I was going to do it either. I think everyone was also a little bit unsure. Uh, but, but more importantly, it was also because uh, I had a lot of trust in the entire team uh, from, from the production house to uh, the DP, the director of photography, to my co-star Jeff. I think the trust was, was uh, built over time. In, 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 I have to say, in a very short time, but yet, you know, the trust was built and that's why I was able to sort of brave myself for something like that. What an exciting win, Dylan. Have, have you watched it? No, you know what, Sue you know I haven't, but I definitely have to see it now. Well, if you're looking to watch it, the series is available online. Congrats again, Last Madame. And that wraps up The Straits Times News Night. Do visit straitstimes.com to see more news and videos. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow.